Welcome, everyone. We are back. It is four o'clock here on the East Coast. I want to welcome you again. How many of you were with me yesterday for part one of our four day? Yes. Okay, good, good. Because I have designed this event, this four day event to build upon each day and to cover off the topics so that they're really relevant to what we did the day before. And yesterday, what I invited you to do was to get clarity around what you would really love. What is that? What do I mean by that? Your goals, right? So how many of you set some goals or added some goals if you already, all right, good, good, good. Now, for those of you that weren't with me yesterday, that's okay, because you can go back and watch the replay. We actually post the replay, and I believe we sent out an email about that this morning. And there we go. Okay, good. So you can watch the replays. If you weren't here yesterday and yet you wanna go and see what was covered off, you can watch the replay. We'll get the replay ready for you as soon as we can. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna find the link for it right now. And um, cause I bookmarked it this morning when I saw it and I'll put it in the little tab on the right hand side so that you'll have this link. And I believe what we're doing is we're simply adding every day the next session so i just put the link on the right hand side and what you may want to do is bookmark it as well because if you bookmark it then you'll be able to refer back to it oh laura lee i already watched the replay well good for you laura lee that's amazing okay so today we're going to talk about building the beliefs that are necessary absolutely essential for you to create or manifest the things that you desire now i have found over the 40 plus years that i've been studying these materials that this part in many courses or many offerings or speech speeches or presentations or books is not really covered off extensively. And yet this is what I would consider the main ingredient or the missing link or whatever you want to call it. It's absolutely important. You must build the belief system because your beliefs, the beliefs you already have beliefs within you now, and they are determining what you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're feeling what your habits are, what your behaviors are, and all of that. And if you want to look at your results, that'll tell you what your beliefs are. They're also known as paradigms. Paradigms, I choose the word beliefs. I, I mean, I'll call them the same interchangeably, but it's the beliefs that you have about you, the beliefs that you have about the world, the beliefs that you have about what's possible for you as well. And in order for you to manifest those things that you declared or that you've set for yourself, the goals that you've written out for yourself, you must create a belief system that is going to support you. It'll be the foundation of everything that you're looking to create. Therefore, here's what I suggest that you do. I want you to pull out your list that you created yesterday, those goals. And whether you wrote them yesterday or you, you didn't write them yesterday, everyone should have goals. And I suspect the people that are on this call have goals. And if you didn't do this yesterday, think about one thing that you would love, because you can certainly follow through this next part of the exercise by focusing on one particular goal. But for everyone else that wrote out a number of goals yesterday, then this is, this is I'm going to give you instruction as well to follow through. So when I look, when I think about the goals that I've written in my goal journal that I have here, there's two pieces that need to be added in order to create that foundation to attract. And so the first one is, what do you need to believe in general in order to accomplish that? And then what do you need to believe about yourself in order to accomplish that? Because you want to build the belief system within you that's, that's going to make it easier for you so that you are on almost like an autopilot. I remember one time I asked Bob Proctor this question. I said, what are your beliefs around money? And Bob and I had done a program together a number of years ago called Making a Million Look Small. And we did this program for about two and a half years and it was around abundance or prosperity mentality. And I asked Bob, I said, oh dear, somebody unmuted themselves. Ah, okay. Let me unmute or mute. Pardon me. If you can uh, refrain from unmuting yourself, that would be terrific. <laughs> okay. So here's, here's what Bob said. He said what he believes about money. And what's interesting is before I give you his answer is he answered, he answered like that. So I asked Bob, what is his belief around money? And he said, how easy it is to earn it. 
How many of you have that belief right now? Type in the chat box if your belief is that money is easy to earn. Be honest. I only want honest answers. Now, I'm not really expecting to see lots of yes answers here on the right hand side because there's not a lot of people that are earning a lot of money. And the truth is 97% of the people on the planet are earning about 3% of the money. Okay. All right. Okay. Honestly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your, your honest answers. And if you don't have the belief that money is easy to earn, how do you believe that belief would change your results? Or do you believe it would change your results? Very likely it would change your results. Another uh, reference to Bob as it relates to money and abundance is the following. Bob will ask people if he's considering hiring someone for his corporation, he will ask them this question. He'll ask them the question, what is the most amount of money that you've ever earned in a year? And he said, I don't ask him this question because I want to be nosy or I am nosy. He said, I'm asking this question because the income that you earn is gonna be reflective of how you feel about your worth about your value. And typically people are earning what they believe they're worth. So if someone is earning, let's say $100,000 a year, that's what they think they're worth. But if someone else is earning 10 million a year, it's because that's what they think they are worth. And it doesn't stop him necessarily from hiring someone. He simply wants to know where they are, where they are currently. Another thing that Bob has taught me is that there's two important things to know when you're pursuing a goal. One is where you are, and two is where are you going? Where you are and where are you going? So it's obvious where we are, but where are you going are the goals that you set for yourself. And what you've created in your life up to this point, what you've attracted in your life up to this point is based on what your beliefs are or have been in the past. Now, you may be someone who's already been working on your beliefs. You may be somebody who's already created a new identity and that you've established this new identity and that you're working on new belief systems, that you're building that right now. And yet you haven't seen the evidence of that in your life yet, but you will. You absolutely will. It's going to take some time. And this is one of the great challenges that a lot of people have is that they get frustrated or impatient because they don't see the results that they want in a timely manner or in the time that they would love to see the results. Or they don't understand the effort that's really required. Or they're simply not focusing on being in alignment. In other words, feeling as if they have that which they desire most of the time. They're thinking maybe positive thoughts, they might be looking at their goals or whatever, but for the majority of the day, they're frustrated. They're upset. They're looking at their debt load and they're becoming and staying emotionally involved in that. So even though you may be doing great work and great steps, you're moving forward. You could also be moving backward. You could be moving forward by declaring what you desire and writing it out on a goal statement and claiming that every single day. And then you look at your bank balance and you step back or you look at your debt load and then you feel upset. You're stepping back. And so what a lot of people do is they go forward, they go back, they go forward, they go back, they go forward, they go back. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah, absolutely. Most people would relate to that if they're honest, if they're honest about that. That was my experience for many, many years. Go forward, go back, go forward, go back, go forward, go back. Until I got to the point, as I mentioned yesterday, I established a new belief that this stuff doesn't work. Now, of course it does, but that was, we're talking way back when, that was the belief that I had created. Why? Because I was felt that I was doing all the things that I, that I was told to do. I was such a great student. I was learning all these materials. I was applying these materials and yet lie down to go to bed at night, start thinking about, you know, worrying about things or being upset about things, drift off into sleep. And of course, that period of time just prior to sleep is the most influential time of your entire day because your subconscious mind, you're in a relaxed state. So your subconscious mind is far more open when you're in the relaxed state. So at night, just prior to going to sleep, what you wanna be focusing on 
our only thoughts and only feelings that are in harmony with what you desire. Because if you're not, what's going to happen is you're going to be consumed in the worry, consumed in the upset, you fall asleep, it's going right into your subconscious mind. And of course, it's going to show up in your life. And I know that's not what you want. So let's talk about how do you build this belief system? What's required in order to build it? I want to give you those steps so that you can get out of your own way, so that you can manifest far more easily and effectively. Is that something that you would love? Type in the chat box on the right-hand side. Yes, okay, good. That was the answer I was looking for. <laughs> okay, good, good. All right, so here's what you do. By the way, I'm gonna open up for questions in a little while. I know there's some hands raised right now. Um, don't ask your questions just yet. I wanna get through this, this exercise here. So considering the goals that you set for yourself, the ones that you set, now this is not a one size fits all. And the reason why it's not a one size fits all is because you may be required to work on different beliefs than the next person or the next person or the next person. I'll give you some examples. I was raised in an environment, and many of you know this, I was raised in an environment that was relatively poor. And my parents didn't have money and they struggled. They struggled. And as a result, there was lots of hostility in the home and upset and things like that. So to, the idea of we live in a prosperous world and that we could earn whatever it is that we desire, this was like foreign to me. Like when Bob Proctor started to speak in January 1979, when he jumped on stage and he started talking, a bit of it sounded like Greek to me because it wasn't computing. It wasn't registering with my consciousness. Now, I was accepting of some of these ideas because I realized in that moment that this gentleman knew a lot more than I knew about success. And he created a couple, a couple quotes or he said a couple of quotes that really resonated with me, including Vernon Howard when he said, you can't escape from a prison unless you know you're in one. Well, the prisons are our own making. The prisons are in our own consciousness that have been created, may have been created when we're a child. Mine certainly were, yours certainly were. And they're not in harmony with thinking about dream life or living an abundant life or having that which you desire. So I had to get to work on changing what my own belief systems were. But not everybody has the same blockages, if you will, for their good, for their divine good. And it could be, a, a and when I say blockage, I'm talking about belief systems that actually, actually create blockages, belief systems such as not being worthy of success. And interestingly enough, I never had that as an issue. I believe I'm worthy of success. I didn't believe I was worthy of love though. And so that was a paradigm that I had to work on and chose to work on. I also believed at a very young age that I was capable of earning money. And so I started earning money at a young age and loved earning money. But to me, there was always a cap because back then I felt that you had to be formally educated to earn a lot of money. I'm not formally educated. Bob Proctor's not formally educated. There are a lot of people who are not formally educated who have earned a lot of money, millions, billions, in fact. And so that's not, not a true belief that you have to have a formal education to earn a lot of money. And if it is a belief within you, it's not necessarily going to be stopping you or blocking you at all. It depends on what you want. So when you think about what is it that you would love to have, do, be, experience in your life, and you consider that as a list, the next thing you do is think about what do I need to believe in order to have that? And that's going to be my recommendation. We're not going to do it while we're here on this call right now. It's my recommendation to you to do this evening or this afternoon, whatever time of day it is. It's, it's going into the evening here very soon. And I'm going to suggest that you do that this evening. What do you need to believe in order to have that which you desire? I want you to work on that. So it could be something like if you think of the goals that you have, it could be that it's already done, that I have everything required to manifest this in my life, that the fact that I thought the idea means that I can manifest it. 
that it will be easy, that it's for the greater good, you know, whatever it is that my family is going to enjoy this with me, that um, I deserve this success, that I deserve to accomplish whatever it is you're looking to accomplish. So those are the types of beliefs that you would have. And then what do you need to believe about yourself? So that's more the identity, the identity statement. So when you look at the goals that you've set, consider this, who is that person? How would I describe that person? What is he or she like? What are they like? Are they disciplined? Are they organized? Are they flexible? Do they have lots of fun? Do they, do they uh, offer great value in the world? What are the beliefs about yourself? And then write an identity statement. Now, could this be considered part of a power life script? Yes, absolutely. It could be considered part of a power life script. Could this be used in a power life script? Definitely. If I think about my own power life script, it includes the goals that I've set for myself and they're written as if I'm already experiencing them and I am enjoying them. It also has a number of statements around who I am, the identity of the person that has already accomplished and is living that dream life. And along with that, other affirmations. We live in an abundant world, an abundant universe that I can have anything that I set my mind to. And those are things that are also become part of it. So essentially what you're building here by identifying these are your goals, this is what you need to believe in order to have that, this is the identity of the person is kind of like a culmination of a power life script. The reason why I suggest it as a step is because it's important that you have the clarity around those two areas. What do you need to believe about the world or in general, what do you need to believe about yourself? It's important that you give that thought, conscious thought, that you give it energy, that you focus your attention on that. And then once you do that, once you've written that out, then you could build a power life script from that. And the power life script is a description of you living your amazing life. Now, here's why a power life script can work exceedingly well for you. It can put you on autopilot and it can build the belief system without you having to do anything other than push play, push play. It's so easy. And when I think back to the 1990s, when I first established this idea of creating a power life script, wrote it and recorded it and started to listen to it, power life script is the one thing that's made the biggest difference in my life as far as results are concerned. Now, why is that? The reason is because it impresses when you listen to your power life script on a regular basis, I listen to mine multiple times a day, it's going into your subconscious mind. See, that's how we take the information in. It comes in through our conscious mind, we accept or reject, and through repetition, space, time, repetition, it goes into our subconscious mind until it becomes a part of who we are, until we believe it it's going to take some time until you get to that point that you believe it. The paradigms must be replaced. They must be replaced. That's how you build that belief system through space-time repetition, through impressing this idea on your subconscious mind. You know, I was reading this morning from this book called This Thing Called You. And I just wanna to read to you a little section that I was reading that's relevant to what we're talking about here uh, right now. So, okay, so your hope lies in the fact that you can change these patterns. So the patterns that Ernest Holmes is talking about are the patterns of thought. You have patterns of thought now. You're a habitual thinker. You're thinking the same way. You've got to break these patterns of the of the negative and the destructive thoughts, okay? So Ernest Holmes says, your hope lies in the fact that you can change these patterns. Now that's great news, right? Most people go through life, don't even realize that they have these patterns. Most people go through life never even thinking or giving an ounce of thought to changing their own patterns. Oh, I'm on page 28, Gregory, <laughs> page 28. Okay, 
it's, it's my favorite page. I think one of my favorite pages in the whole book, it's underlined, dog-eared, um, highlighted. Okay, and I'm on the bottom, bottom paragraph of page 28. So perhaps not in a moment or a day or a month or a year, but you can change them. I want you to listen to that. Perhaps not in a moment, a day, a month or a year, but you can change them. So remember I was saying that for years and years and years, I was working on these materials and I was frustrated because I was thinking they don't work. It wasn't, they don't work. The materials work magnificently, perfectly. I mean, this is not new information we're talking about. I'm pointing to my bookshelf back there. Like countless people have been right. People have been writing about the success for centuries. And so it does work. What the difference is, the reason why it wasn't working for me is because I wasn't impressing it consistently into my subconscious mind. It wasn't until I created a power life script and started to impress every day by listening and listening and listening that it made a difference. You're right, Carol. Carol Elliott is here. She's one of our destiny coaches. She says, you have to work them. You're right, Carol. Absolutely true. This is a process of, okay, hang on. This is not a process of merely making affirmations or holding thoughts. It is a process of the gradual re-education of your whole mental reaction. What I want you to know is that your habitual, so mental reaction, we're mentally reacting, we're mentally thinking, we're habitually thinking every day. It's a book called This Thing Called You. Thank you, Michelle, for writing the answer there. It is a process of following the intuition back to the pattern of feeling toward it, of accepting it, and of acting as though it were there. So when you write your power life script, you write it in the present tense as if you're living that life now. And you, em you embody the emotion of it at the same time. That's why you'll hear the recommendation of you write a goal with the words, I am so happy and so grateful. Why? Because happy, grateful are emotions. It causes you to feel something. But by saying words like I am so happy and so grateful, does that cause you to feel something? No. You choose to feel it. You're at choice and what you're going to think. You're at choice in how you're gonna feel all the time. But you're habitually thinking, you're habitually feeling. You wanna break the old patterns so that you can habitually think and feel as the success that you already are. Enjoying the things that you would love to have in your life. So this is why the Power Life script works. Randy says, is it necessary to pay conscious attention to the Power Life script while you're listening to it? Or is it merely having playing also effective? Yes and yes. And I'll talk about that in a moment. I just want to finish off this part and then I'm going to come back to that. Ernest Holmes says, this whole thing is so simple. And that's what I love about it is the simplicity. At first, it seems impossible that it could be that way. Yet it is. As you watch your mental actions and reactions, particularly those that are rooted in feeling, as you observe your expectations, you will feel impulses rising from within. Habits of belief, patterns of thought, too many of which are negative. This is the reason why people are not getting the results they want. Too many of which are negative. I was flooded with negativity. It was my dominant thought, my dominant feeling. I had to break those patterns and it was a challenge. It took time. Yeah, absolutely. I think some people can can relate to that as well. As you carefully and weigh, weigh and measure the operation of this unconscious expectancy, as it comes to the surface, you can detect what has to be changed. You can accept that these impulsions are thought patterns that have been laid down there by yourself or the sum total of human belief. You will realize that they can be changed by bringing an exact opposite thought patterns. This will not be a question of struggling with the old patterns as much as it will be one of gradually straining them out. I wrote Power Life Script in the book. 
because when I read that the first time, which was many times ago, when I read that the first time, it I realized that that's why the Power Life script works. It's going to replace. It's going to replace the old. See, a lot of people want to get rid of, get rid of. You're replacing it. And also the opposite. Typically, when people are feeling anxious, upset, angry, frustrated, they're at the opposite end of a positive emotion. So it's not that you're going to eliminate these emotions. You're just going to rise up to a higher energy state, a higher level of frequency, which is a positive emotion. Just like I use with the dimmer switch, the analogy that a light on the wall, you it's a dimmer switch. If you push it down, the light goes dark. You push it up, the light illuminates. You put it at the highest level, it's bright in the room. You put it at the lowest level, it's dark in the room. It's like negative emotions. Your life becomes dark. It becomes hopeless, helpless. You feel happy, it becomes vibrant. You're seeing things very differently. Okay, so this is an important to do this. And as I said, I studied so many programs. Bob Proctor wasn't my only mentor. I read all the books, all the great people. I went to all the seminars for many, many years, just over and over and over again, like a junkie or addict or whatever, just want more, 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 more. It's like there was a movie a number of years ago called Short Circuit. And there's this little robot and he's like, input, input, input. He wanted it. You remember it, Laura Lee? I see your head nodding there. It was cute. It was a cute little robot. And I remember seeing that robot because he was going around looking for input, input, input. It wanted information. That's what I was like. I just wanted more, wanted more, wanted more. Why? Because I wanted to get out of the pain. I wanted to get rid of the emotional pain. I wanted to live my life the way I chose to live. This is not a trial run here. This is it, baby. This is it. Now, my brother, who was 49, left this earthly plane like at a young age. You have experiences like that. It makes you realize just how precious life is. People who have life altering experiences realize how precious life is. But you also have to realize that this is the time that like you chose to be here during this hour. Good use of your time. How are you effectively utilizing your time? Are you investing time to really pay attention? Is your awareness up? Do you have antennas on your head? I used to say that, put antennas on your head so that you're aware, like there's really noticing. Noticing what you're noticing, noticing what you're thinking, noticing what you're feeling. And as, as Ernest Holmes says, when it rises up, because emotions, your beliefs are gonna rise up, they will reveal themselves. Also, this is what happens. And I want you to know this and understand this. Yesterday, when we had part one, we were talking about your goals. What would you really love? Because you can have anything that you really want. Now, here's what happens. And I mentioned this yesterday. As soon as you start to think, oh, I'd really love to have that, your paradigms are going to start, like Ernest Holmes says, start to rise up. So what are the paradigms going to do? They're non-supportive right now. So they're going to say things like, or you're going to feel it, or it'll be a thought. You can't have that. You can't do that. The truth is you can, but if you believe you can, or you believe you can't, you're right. That was Henry Ford's quote. And not only that, let's say you decide I'm going for it. I'm doing this and off you go. You've set the goal. You're working on this. What happens tomorrow? Paradigms. Wait a minute. Do you really want that? I don't know. It's probably going to be a lot of work. I don't even know if you've got what it takes to get there, right? What are those? Those are old, negative, destructive, trying to pull you back paradigms. Now, the paradigms don't have a judgment around what your decisions are. Paradigms were built. They're there. They're going to support you or not. And that's why, you know, Randy asked the question, listening to her power life script, do you have to actively listen to it or passively listen to it? Actively is where you're paying attention. Like you're listening and you're connecting and you're in the whole experience of it, smiling perhaps, feeling great, and you're totally connected. That's active listening to your power life script. Passive listening is where it's playing, but you could be having a conversation with someone else. Or maybe it's Gregory, he's playing the guitar and singing at the same time while he's listening to his power life script. I've actually recorded videos just to demonstrate how this can be done. I've recorded videos with my earbuds in while my power life was going and talked about something else. So we can do that, right? And I want you to understand something about that idea. This is why paradigms are formed. Television's on, it's playing the news, radio's going, 
talking about news, that's going in. It's going in. It's going in. You're at the grocery store checkout lineup. You're looking at the headlines. They don't look good. You're seeing the newspapers or online looking at the news. It's all going in, all going in. You don't think it's affecting you. It's affecting you. It is affecting you. Now, does that mean you just shut off everything else in the world as much as you can? Sure. You don't want to get involved in negative conversations. You don't want to talk about how awful it is out there or COVID this and COVID that and the government this and the government that and all oh, this weather and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't serve you. Anytime you're at the lower end of the scale, meaning emotional scale, you are in destructive mode. Even if it's justified, there are a lot of people, right? Gregory, thank you for nodding your head. There are a lot of people who bitch, sorry about the word, moan, complain. I call them BMWs, BMW, bitch, moan, whine <laughs> about government stuff or they didn't do this or they didn't do that or whatever. What are they doing? They're getting caught up in negativity, right? They're just revolving around all this negativity. Okay, it has nothing to do with them, but yet what are they feeling? Negative emotions. What are they doing? Destructive work. Stay away from that. Don't get involved in that. You know, it wasn't that long ago, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice to have a wonderful day where people only speak highly or positively about others? Wouldn't that be wonderful? No judgment, no criticism, no jealousy, no anger towards another. What if we just decided we're all going to love each other and treat each other the way we want to be treated? How would that change the world? It would huge change, even if we did it for one day one day. You see, even if you're speaking about someone else who did something nasty to you, refrain, bite your tongue, don't go there. It doesn't serve you. But there's an expression in English that goes like this, misery loves company. It does love company. And I remember my mom, you know, my mom was a very, very loving, giving, generous woman but very negative. And she'd been raised in a very negative environment. And when she was alive and I'd go visit her and we were close, we were very close. And she lived in Toronto and I live in Ottawa now. And I would drive down there. And on the drive, I would be thinking about protecting myself from the negativity because I don't want to get involved in it. And I got to her home and I just decided, okay, my, my plexiglass shield is up, not letting it in. And she would start to speak negatively about my brother. And, uh, and I would throw something back at her and I'd say, well, isn't it wonderful that he did this? So what I would do is I'd try and give her another perspective or look at it this way or find the good, right? Where's the blessing? What's great about this? And I would either ask her questions or make comments. And of course, I found her really being confused <laughs> by this approach because that's not what she wanted. She wanted to get engaged in a conversation that was negative or destructive, and I chose not to. And you'll find, like after we leave this call today, you'll find and just start to pay attention to conversations that you have with others and notice if you're giving any energy to anything negative. And if so, bite your tongue. Just stop it, stop it, don't go there. Don't be involved in that. It's not where you want to go because it's going to hurt you, even if it's justifiable. And then another area where I see a lot of people getting involved in negative energy is talking about what happened to them, which is back there. It's in the past. We can't do anything about that. We can learn from it. Sure. Can't change the past. Can't change the time we got out of bed this morning. That's what Bob Proctor said. And and so we want to, I really want to, uh, yes, exactly. McGregor Hammond says, uh, Bob Proctor and his son, Brian, call each other in the morning to talk, talk good about someone. So it's like, talk good behind their back. I love that. Talk good behind their back. Yes. Brian was talking about doing a book on that as well. And Brian will sometimes send me a text and he'll say, dad and I were talking about you this morning. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now, what most people think is they think, Oh, if they're talking about me, it probably wasn't good, right? But if it's Brian and Bob, they were speaking, you know, they were speaking good. You're right, Carol. One person can change the whole vibration. Okay, so Mila's asking the question, what's the name of the app for the Power Life Script Loop for the iPhone? Um, is, it's a voice loop? Yes, it's called voice loop. 
Definitely. Yeah, I was on the phone today with one of my clients and we were talking about that. I use a QuickTime player. I have a MacBook Pro and on my MacBook, I have QuickTime player and I use that to record my Power Life script. But here's what I also want to suggest when you're listening to your Power Life script is to listen when you record it, actually, before you record it, get into a really good energetic state. I only record my power left script when I'm feeling great, which is most of the time. But there might be days where I may not have had a great night's sleep or energy is a little on the lower side. I won't record it. I just won't record it. I'll record it when I'm feeling great, which as I said, is most of the time. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll stand up when I'm recording because when you stand up, you have more energy in your body. And what you also want to do is, you know, keep your head high you know, you can look up, but if you're reading, you're probably not looking up. Mine's written on my computer, so I'm reading on my computer, but say it with real emotion. If you are declaring that you're happy about something in your life, in your power life script, and you're saying the word happy, feel the word happy as you're saying it. If you're saying you're grateful, feel grateful as you're saying it. If you're saying you love, you know, I love, like one of the things that I have in mind is, we're sitting around the campfire, you know, at our waterfront place and we're roasting marshmallows and singing songs and Gregory's there playing the guitar and, <laughs> and uh, you know, laughing and having fun. And, and as I'm saying it, I, I'm laughing. I'm laughing and I'm having fun. And sometimes I'll put some woohoos in there. And, and so, and I'll usually record it with the door closed. So my husband's not around or he might be around. He hears me go, doing this all the time. Matter of fact, he gets my vehicle and he hears it playing all the time. So he's used to it. And by the way, we recorded one together and you can have multiple recordings as well. In other words, do you only have to have a power life script? Sure, you could, and that might be all you need. But there have been other times where I've had additional scripts. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, many years ago, when my husband and I decided to buy a waterfront place, what I did was I wrote out a script or a version of a script with me speaking and then Denny speaking and then me speaking and then Denny speaking. So I'd write a paragraph and I would start it off and then Denny would say something and then I would say something and then he would say something. And I asked him, I said, would you be willing to record this with me? And he said, sure. So I took my laptop into the kitchen. We're both standing there. And then I said, okay, I'll go first. Then you go. And I hit record and we did it. And we had a lot of fun. We were laughing while we we're doing it. And, and we ad libbed a little bit while we we're doing it as well. But there was a lot of emotion in it for both of us. And now he didn't listen to it. I listened to it. I created it for my own use. But it was another way of really reinforcing the beliefs and seeing and imagining that this was already in our experience. And it was a relatively short period of time before I ended up buying that waterfront property. And so I used that. So you could create a script with another. I remember one time being on a radio show. And there was a gentleman that was interviewing me and he said he was going to use that with his wife to manifest their dream home. They both had the same vision of a dream home. I'm not sure if they had a particular house already chosen, but they decided to create their own version of a, a mini script with the two of them talking about living in their beautiful dream home and how it, how it felt for them to be living in their dream home. So you could certainly do that as well. All right, I just want to say if there are any questions here, uh, Vladdy is here with us today and she is collecting them for me. And uh, I just, I think I may have already, oh, there we go. Joanna has a question here. Peggy, uh, do you only change your power life script once you have a manifestation in the 3D or you can, can change amend it before? All right, great question, Joanna. Here's when I change my power life script. I'll change my power life script once I've accomplished a goal, as an example, because I'll set a new goal. And so I'll accomplish a goal and then I'll set a new goal. Uh, I'll give you an example of that as well. One of the goals that I set for myself is that, it's a recent goal actually, is that I was uh, purchasing a brand new uh, truck for my son as a gift and paying for it in cash in full and a 2021. And I did that. So I took him to the dealership and uh, I had him choose exactly what I wanted. He actually built the vehicle and uh, I paid for it. And he came and he picked it up, picked it up on Friday, last Friday. 
And that was a goal that I had set for myself. It was in my, in my uh, goals. And now it's written as victory because I just modified it to say victory. So that was in my power life script. So would I have that in there now? No, I already bought him a truck. He has this new truck. So I would modify it as I accomplish goals. That's one reason why. I will modify it when I add goals. There's another reason why I would modify it. And I'll modify it if I hear a statement that I really love that I choose to become my own. For example, I have on my desk here, and I mentioned this yesterday that I wrote out on one of my purple index cards, a reminder statement that says, I live in the joyous expectancy of the best. I expect more good now than I've ever experienced. And that goes into my power life script as well, because I choose to enforce it or I choose to connect to it. As I'm studying, if I'm studying Ernest Holmes as an example, and I read something in here that I particularly like or love and think that that would be a great statement to add to my power life script. And so I'll modify it then if I um, do something a little different. So as, as you grow, as you expand, as you add more goals, you're gonna evolve. So savvy wisdom as an example. In my power life script, I talk about the success of savvy wisdom. I talk about the movie uh, for savvy wisdom, but not just that a movie was made, that it won an Oscar, right? That it's an Academy Award winning movie. And not only that, ugh, it's heavy. My Oscar is heavy. Not only that, uh, uh, that the, the movie won an Oscar, but that there are A-list actors in the movie, perfect actors in the movie. And that the movie is, is the biggest success of any movie of its kind ever. I talk about you know how many millions of books have sold of savvy wisdom. So you're going to evolve. Your consciousness is going to expand as you're in the study. So Vladdy had sent me a text after we had our session last evening. Now, Vladdy is working with Dynamic Destinies, as many of you know. And so when we were doing that session yesterday on you know, writing down what would you really love, and I was giving some examples of shopping sprees in New York City and of uh, uh, one that I added recently was that I'm taking my family on a first class vacation. We're traveling to and from the destination in a private jet and we have a wonderful time. All of us have a wonderful time. So when I mentioned that yesterday, Vladdy was inspired and she wrote a whole bunch of goals, added goals. So if you find yourself adding new goals, there's another reason to adjust your power life script. And you can never record it too often. Like I love recording my power life script. I find it very inspiring. It connects you to the materials again. Now, if you have a power life script written, I know some people simply read it every day. And now I'm more of an auditory learner. Some people are more visual learners. Some people are more kinesthetic. And you may find that you are more drawn to um, a more of an experiential reaction or response, if you will, to reading it or hearing it or seeing it. And the idea behind the Power Life Script is to build those belief systems. And one of the reasons why Vladdy had such powerful and positive changes in her life in such a short period of time was because of saturation. What she did was she saturated her mind. And I listen to my power life script multiple times a day. So today I was in my office early and I was listening to it actually while I was getting ready this morning. And then I got up to go make my green smoothie. And I walked out of, out of my office and I thought, and I turned around and I came back to get my earbuds because they weren't in. It doesn't take that long to make a smoothie, maybe 15 minutes or whatever. But I thought that's 15 minutes that I could be impregnating my mind with powerful ideas, right? And so I plugged them back in, started listening. I came back and I'm sitting down. Now, if I'm working, I'm on a client call, I'm not listening to my power life script. If I'm doing what I'm doing right now, I'm not listening to my power life script. But when I'm finished, if I'm finished here today, we're gonna finish around five or a little after, I'll be making dinner for my husband and, uh, and I, and so I'll go in the kitchen. If I'm making dinner, the earbuds go in. We have dinner, we usually take the dogs out for a walk afterwards. Airbuds go in. I'm listening to it. My husband is a sportsaholic 
And so he loves watching golf, hockey, baseball, anything that's sports <laughs> with a ball. So, you know, in the evenings, if he's watching some sports, I might sit with him and I'll put my earbuds in. Sometimes I'll read, like I'll be studying in the evening. I might be reading some of uh, Ernest Holmes or Neville Goddard. I'll have my earbuds in. Not always, but sometimes because it's still going in, going in. So if you really wanna have some massive change in a short period of time, I would suggest that you do that. Just saturate your mind with your Power Life script, but make sure that you've written it effectively. It's really, really important that you write your Power Life script in a way that it is expressive of you living that life. So it's only positive words, it's in the present tense, it's in the now, it must be something that you can see, you be, must be able to see it in your mind's eye, and you certainly must be able to feel it. You've got to feel it, that's important. So always a great idea to improve upon that. All right, Heather, I see your hand is raised there, and I'm happy to unmute your line or ask you to unmute your line if you're open to also. Um, Actually, I did it by mistake. <laughs> oh, you did it by mistake. Okay, yeah. no worries, Heather. <laughs> Thanks, anyhow. Okay, good enough. All right, I know a couple people had their hands raised earlier. I don't know if you had a question or maybe you did that by mistake as well. Okay, great. So Nelly says, I really enjoy listening to it. I even added background music when I recorded it. I used to add background music to mine. And one of the things that I did with mine is I put binaural beat music behind mine. And the reason why I did that is because I... Um, I wanted the binaural music activates the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere of the brain. It goes back and forth, back and forth. But now I just record it with my own voice. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, iPhone. iPhone says, Peggy, thank you so much. You're always giving us so much valuable content. I can't say enough. I appreciate you. Who is iPhone? Tell me who iPhone is. Okay, I'm looking for questions here. All right. I want to make sure I didn't miss any. Oh. The ghost of Steve Jobs. Don't know what that means. Okay. How long is your Power Life script audio? Okay. Uh, is that Joanne that asked that question? Okay. How long is mine? Well, it varies. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes it's 23 minutes. Sometimes it's 28 minutes. Sometimes it's 19 minutes. And here's why I say it varies because I change it, right? So I'm changing it. And um, when I, sometimes I'll record it and I don't know if you've noticed or not, but sometimes I speak quickly <laughs> and uh, I intentionally slow myself down from time to time. But when I'm doing my Power Life script, I'm in like high speed mode. Hi, Peggy McCall, I'm so happy and so grateful. <laughs> it sounds like it's on, on uh, fast forward, uh, but I can still hear it and that's all fine. So, um, or if I'm in a hurry, if I look at the clock and I think, oh, I want to record my power left script and I have 30 minutes, then I'll sometimes record a little faster. But it's around that. Like, it doesn't matter how long it is. It really doesn't. You could have a two minute power left script that's very effective. I've had clients create, friends create short power left scripts that are incredibly perf um, perfect. They, they're just, they work, they're effective. Mine's a little bit longer because I keep adding to it and I don't want to take anything away. I love the stuff that I have in there. It has a lot of affirmations and mine has a lot of affirmations in it as well. Okay. If anyone wants me to unmute your line, you can raise your hand and I can certainly uh, unmute your, your line as well. Okay. Trina is asking, how long is a typical power life script? Is it five minutes, 30 minutes? Is there an ideal length or just the length is better? Okay, so similar question to what we, uh, what we just answered. As long as you want it to be. Nellie says hers is 17 minutes. Marty, where can we find the Savvy Wisdom movie? Well, the screenplay is not written yet, Marty, but I love your enthusiasm for it. Yeah, we're, um, the screenplay is being written. I think it'll be done in about three weeks. And then they, what they do, so the process is they first did a beat sheet, which is kind of outlining the way the movie would go, which was approved. Then they go to screenplay and they write that out, which is halfway done. And then after that, then they go to the talent, which is the A-list actors, and they secure the contracts with them. Then they sell it to a studio and uh, then it goes into production. So I suspect it's probably gonna be 2022 before that movie is uh, uh, shooting. Thank you for asking. 
All right, lots of questions around the uh, length. Vladdy, so Vladdy's been gathering questions and um, posting them for me here. Here's what's happening, Vladdy. They're just going in the chat with everything else. That's why I'm having a challenge finding them. I had mentioned to Vladdy earlier that what Celine does is she'll copy them and stick them in a WhatsApp app, but uh, Vladdy didn't have that on her computer, but I said, we'll figure this out. Okay, here we go. All right, Mila, can you expand on the best practices for using a goal journal? Oh, okay. Oh, wait, hang on a second here. I missed some other questions. Okay, let me just do this one. Here's your booster juice. <laughs> I like that. Okay, um, more on using a goals journal. So the, my goals journal, I have my goals written out in here. And as I accomplish them, I simply write victory. So I mentioned that I bought my son a truck. That was a goal. I had it written in here. I wrote victory when he picked it up on Friday. So that's how I use my goals journal. But I also read the goals every single day, every day. Someone had asked, where do you find out more information about Power Life Script? You can go to powerlifescript.com. There's a whole program and scripts and audios I recorded as well. If the goals in the Power Life Script aren't manifesting, is it time to record a new Power Life Script? No, not necessarily. It could be just a timing thing. It could be a gestation. It hasn't, it just hasn't come up yet. But uh, no, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with your Power Life Script. It could be just a timing thing. But if you had that thought, you need to record your Power Life Script, it certainly wouldn't hurt probably be a good thing to do. Can you say a little bit more about how you add emotions to your power life script? Do you pause underway and just read it repeatedly? All right, gr grateful greetings from Copenhagen, Denmark. I just love listening to you. Well, thank you, Christina. All right, uh, add emotions to your power life script. It really is just this. So if, if, I'm, if I'm describing, uh, for example, buying my son a new car, a new truck, I'm so happy and grateful that I bought my son, Michelle, a brand new truck that he picked out, that he chose. And as I'm saying, and I'm feeling the emotion, that's it. It's just connecting to, you know, knowing that it's already done. Your emotion is that it's done, that you're happy, you're grateful. Now you might feel relieved. I am so relieved now that all the taxes are paid up and paid in full, whatever it is, right? Like just just whatever emotion you would be feeling, you just say it and feel it as you're, as you're saying it. Josie says, I infinitely appreciate everything you do. What are three books you would recommend to enhance belief? Savvy wisdom, savvy wisdom and savvy wisdom. <laughs> Read it three times. Okay, savvy wisdom, the demand principle and uh, darn easy, how about that? <laughs> They're all Peggy McCall books. But definitely Savvy Wisdom, that, that's definitely one. Uh, the Demand Principle is a great book as well. I definitely want to recommend this one. This is another very popular book. It's uh, Your Invisible Guide to Easily Manifest Everything. And this is becoming one of my, or become one of my favorite books of all time, this thing called You by Ernest Holmes. <laughs> They're great, great books. All right. Okay, oh yes, I love this question, Olga. Um, do you do your power life script in the first or third name? Do you say I or Peggy you are? I say I, I am. You could say, you know, your name you are, but I, I like to say I am. Oh, all right. So Artie says, I still don't understand what a power life script is. Is it a book? No, it's a description that you write of you living your ideal life. So you can go to we actually have a book that we, uh, hang on, I'm gonna find it on my bookshelf here. Where are you? No, that's not it. There. We actually created this as a freebie, a free giveaway. Oh, is that is that what that is? Vladdy, did you get that, that link for the, I just don't remember where we put this free book. Just gonna check here. Huh, okay, I know where I can find it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to find the link for you for that free book. Aha, uh -huh. I found it. Now let me send it to you. And copy and paste. There you go. Oh, dear, I'm about to copy it and paste it to Vladdy only. And I want to send it to, nope. 
Now I'm sending it to Laura, <laughs> Laura Lee. Okay, here we go. Now I'm sending it to everyone. Paste. Okay, there's a free ebook that explains the Power Life Script process. I did create a program as well where I went into a studio and I recorded all kinds of scripts. So if you want me talking to you about how wonderful you are, then you can certainly do it that way as well. Oh, Joanne just finished the demand principle. Awesome. She said it's amazing. I love that. Thank you. Sabrina is asking, what helps to turn up the faith that my Power Life Script contents will manifest has manifested what helps to turn up the faith that my power life script contents have manifested has manifested great question your power life script turns up the faith all right so your your the answer was actually in your question your power life script will increase your faith listen to it that's what you do that's how you do it tamara says i'm working on a, a promising project but it's taking a long time my negative paradigms sometimes come up and ask what if someone beats me to this. I know that I'm not on the competitive plane, but on the creative plane, but still the worry of me wasting my efforts on the project sometimes persists. Can you suggest an affirmation to replace this thought? All right. So hmm. without knowing what the project is, I would say something like, I would get, do an affirmation on the success of the project. Just think outcome write an affirmation that's based on the outcome. I'm so happy and grateful now that, right? Now that your project is a complete success, that it's a world leader, that it's whatever, just talk about the outcome or the results of your project. Give no energy to anything else. That'll eliminate that. Thank you. All right, I appreciate the kind words as well, guys. I wanna make sure that I am not uh, missing any questions. Oh, Jackie G says she's talking about savvy wisdom. She says, I've cried three times, still cry when I read Savvy's letter. Yeah, me too. Such a beautiful book. It came through me. Destiny Switch. Yes, your Destiny Switch is another great book. This is uh, one of my most successful books. This one is in many languages all over the world, published by Hay House. And that's also a great book. Okay, Judy's been very patiently waiting up there in the top right-hand corner. Judy, can you unmute your line for me, please? Yes, thank there you. Is. Hi, Peggy. Hi, how are you? Who do you have I, you today in your office? That's great. Oh, this is my office manager. I, I wanted her to get a feel of how great you are and what this is like. Oh, so. that's so sweet. What's her name? Sherry. 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 Hi, Sherry. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to um, meet you, too. I would love for you to um, talk, a, if you can, a little more about right before we go to bed. Yes. Okay, when you were talking about that, and is that a good time to do the power life script? And could you just like give a yes. few more suggestions? You know, absolutely. What, okay. Thanks. You know, the, you know, it's it's interesting that you asked that question, and I want to answer it by also. I know we did we did this yesterday. I talked about this as well, but I'm going to preface the answer by sharing something from this thing called you from page 47. Here's what Ernest Holmes says: It makes little difference what method you use, provided you have conviction. So that's why I want to mention that first, because it, it doesn't matter if you're listening to your power life script, whether you're asking yourself a question, whether you're just laying in bed thinking, it doesn't matter what method you use. Here's what matters most, conviction. So what's conviction? That's your feeling. So the, the what I do is I have this question beside my bed. Now that my dream is fulfilled, how do I feel? Now that my dream is fulfilled, how do I feel? Now this one says, now that your dream is fulfilled, how do you feel? I also have it on a big sign that's beside my bed. Now that's what I ask myself before I go to bed at night. Now that my dream is fulfilled, how do I feel? And then I get emotionally involved in my live in my dream life. Now I may or may not choose a particular goal that I'm gonna focus on. And I have a primary goal that I have on my goal card that I carry around in my phone. And quite often that's where my attention ends up going is to that. Sometimes it'll go to savvy wisdom. Savvy wisdom is actually not my top goal, but I do have goals for savvy wisdom. So sometimes my thought will drift there. It might drift to being on set. Um, I also do this in the morning, but the evening time is the most impressionable time because you're about to drift off into sleep. And more importantly, it's because you're in a relaxed state. 
that's why meditation can be so effective for people because they get relaxed, right? They take in deep breaths. They, they just stop any, any attention or anything that's taken their attention away from, from things. And they just get relaxed, get quiet. It's like Dr. Joseph Murphy said, it's the quiet mind that gets things done. And when you crawl into bed and you're getting relaxed and about to drift off into sleep, your mind goes into a theta state. And so your conscious mind becomes more open or your subconscious mind becomes more open and receptive to what's coming in because your conscious mind is not there with the reasoning factor going, whoa, wait a minute. Like that, no, no, that, that's not true. That's not gonna, the conscious mind is gonna be more accepting. So it's like a bypass. It's like a bypass. Those periods of or minutes just before you go to sleep is the bypass to your subconscious mind. So what you're thinking about, of course you wanna be putting in only ideas that are in harmony with what you desire. So if you ask yourself the question, now that my dream is fulfilled or now that my goal is realized, you know, create questions like sometimes people like, well, I'm not sure I wanna say dream fulfilled. So what, what, what do you wanna say? Goal realized, okay, say goal realized. Or now that I'm living in my dream home, how do I feel? They might even specifically say a particular goal. Or now that I'm a multimillionaire, how am I feeling? It doesn't matter what you're saying. It's the method isn't, isn't the essential part of it. It's how are you feeling? And then you ask yourself that, you get emotionally involved in it, and then you drift off into sleep. Now, I've had habits of listening to my parallel script before going to bed. But what I found is it gets me excited like really excited. And then I end up out of bed back in the office because I get inspired with ideas. Now I've done different versions of my power life script. So I have my very enthusiastic daytime version, and then I created a nighttime version and it's not as long. It's shorter, but it'll go like this. As you are about to drift off into sleep. You know, so I slow my voice right down. Know that what I'm about to say to you is absolutely true. And then I'll talk about my, and I, I've done a version of that, but honestly, Judy, that one still gets me excited because <laughs> I start thinking about all these things. And so for me, because it doesn't matter what you do, but my favorite approach at nighttime before going to bed is simply asking myself that question. And it works amazingly well. Now, Wayne Dyer, who you know, as you know, was a, a client of mine and he wrote, um, wrote this book called Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling. I'm just looking for it on my bookshelf. He said in there that what you're giving attention to in those pre-sleep moments are going to show up, whatever you're thinking about, that's going to show up in your life 66% of the time. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. 66% of the time. So obviously you want to be giving attention to what you desire. Now, what are most people doing when they crawl into bed? You get quiet, right? And that's when you've heard the expression monkey mind, you know, then the monkey mind starts like, da, 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 da. oh my God, you didn't do that today. And you know, this didn't happen or whatever, whatever. And so, you know, people get caught up in the negative energy and then they go to sleep. Then they wonder why that keeps showing up in their life. Now, Wayne Dyer learned that from Neville Goddard because Wayne was a big fan of Neville Goddard. And that's where he learned it. Now, how do they know? I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm not doubtful, but I wonder how do they know that what you're thinking about in those pre-sleep moments is going to show up in your life? I don't know how they know. But if you think about why that occurs, like the theta state, subconscious mind. And you, Judy, you know all about the, you know, the conscious Bob's circle, you know, the conscious mind, subconscious mind and, and the body. So if you think about that, it makes perfect sense. Gosh. And such a simple thing to do. So it's the most impressionable time of your day as it relates to your results. So it gets a priority and should get a priority. Oh, thank you. This is great, Peggy. <laughs> awesome. You. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Thanks for being here, Judy. It was good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks. And nice to meet you too, Sherry. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got some other hands up. Laura Lee. Okay. So let's go right here. Hang on, Laura Lee. I'm going to bring you into the spotlight. Add to spotlight. And if you can unmute your line, that would be terrific. Hi. 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 
totally believed when I listened to the recording of, <laughs> of your, your savvy <laughs> uh, story that you had Morgan already signed up. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and I told all kinds of people that because he's one of my favorite actors. Oh, I, know. I, I love say, him. <laughs> I heard you say that uh, that was a goal of yours. So it somebody is. put that together because it sounds like he did it. Well, you know, it, and here's the thing. I'm not attached to that. You know, it, and, and this is what I teach people, right? As you know, Laura Lee, is that, you know, if, if uh, Morgan Freeman ends up being savvy in, in the movie, it's actually in my goals too. It is, it's in here too. <laughs> it's in my life script. And so in my mind, it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. And and I don't, I don't think any other way. And uh, we have been we meaning Phil Goldfine. They've been in touch with Morgan's agent. He has a copy of Savvy Wisdom. He's very familiar with Savvy Wisdom, and he's basically said they like the project. Give us an offer. And uh, so yeah. they it comes so down to money, <laughs> right? So it comes down to money. But it's not only money. And Morgan Freeman is very much like that. And I love that you love him, Morgan Freeman. He's into these materials. Like he, he is a, a student of the materials as well. Yeah. He's a believer. Yeah. And I feel he's going to really resonate with the, with the story. And so the other morning, it was interesting that Judy had asked that question about, you know, pre-sleep moments. Because in the morning, I do the same thing. So I'll think about all, you know, it's just the same thing in the evening. Now that my dream is fulfilled, how do I feel? So the other morning I was laying in bed and I was thinking about being on set. And in my mind, I was on set, like they're doing the movie. Morgan's there, you know, he's they're they're running a scene. Bob's there as well, because Bob and I are gonna go watch, not we won't watch the whole movie being made, but we're gonna watch part of the movie. They're talking about filming in Canada as well, which would be great. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and so in my mind, in my imagination, I'm seeing Bob and Morgan chatting with each other. And I in my imagination, I walked over to them and I said, Hey, would you guys like me to take a picture of you? And they're like, sure. And, and that's just, it's a scene. It's a yeah. scene that I'm having in my own mind. But at the same time, and what I teach people is don't have an unhealthy attachment to it. Like Morgan's in his late eighties, Bob's in his late eighties, you know, and I'm not saying they're going to be gone from this earthly plane. I mean, I could just as easily be gone from this earthly plane as they can, but they've also talked about Anthony Hopkins. And they've okay. talked about John, what's John's last name? He's, it's another actor, um, uh, Lith, Lithgow, Lithgow, I think his name Oh, is. yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so they've talked it's about- Third Rock from the third drop from the Sun. I yeah. That's, he's done that one. Is that's, that what he did? I'm not oh. familiar with that. Oh, no, he's done tons. Okay, so if it's gonna be John Lithgow or- Anthony Hopkins or Morgan Freeman. I mean, obviously Morgan's yeah. my first <laughs> choice <laughs> and I totally see him. I can hear him. And I don't know if you were on that call one day, Laura Lee, where uh, Troy Chadwick, who's also in, you know, the skipping levels program, Troy made an audio for me. Oh, that's who did it. Yes. I and just heard it, but it wasn't, right. on a, wasn't on this. I heard it on I saw it on one of the it Facebook, was on Facebook. It was on the Savvy Wisdom yes. Facebook group. So Troy Troy <laughs> hired a guy who does voiceover. It's not Morgan. It's, oh, a, it's an it's actor <laughs> who does voiceover, and he had him read the. Final I know. Letter. That's why I thought it was real. It was amazing. <laughs> like amazing. I should see if I can find it right now and play it for you guys. I don't know oh, where. Well, well, I believe that it was him. I. I played that several times to people. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, so I was like story. so excited. <laughs> I know it's really exciting, and and uh, you know if it's Morgan, it's Morgan. If it's not, it's not. I don't know if I Troy Troy has sent me so much stuff. I'm not sure if I could find it here uh, quickly, but let me see if I can documents. There we go. Seven in the iCloud. All right, I'll download them. I'll see if I can play it. But you know, the, the idea, and I was chatting with someone earlier about this today is the more tools you create or visualization practices that you get into that create the experience of that which you desire helps, right? It contributes to it. And that's why I've got the Oscar. And I found this particular Oscar 
that is like almost identical to the real yeah. thing. I mean, this is, I don't know how many pounds it is. It's pretty heavy. And Phil saw it. And of course, Phil has one. And he said, it's the closest yeah. thing. It's the closest that, that I've ever seen to an Oscar. So that's why I, you know, I created the, uh, um, you know, had it engraved, you know, best motion picture savvy wisdom. And then, I, <laughs> and then Troy, Troy actually photoshopped this for me as well. Mm. and put Morgan into the photo so that I could, um, you know, a, a visualization tool. Do that. I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple of little things and you can look for it if you want. Sure. Um, just to share with some other people, there's all kinds of people here much further advanced in destinies, uh, dynamic destinies and um, uh, skipping levels than I am because I just joined, but not even a month ago, I did up uh, my uh, goals here and surprisingly some of the big ones and being in destinies uh, dynamic destinies coaching program was one of them wow. I had thought I would do skipping levels in the fall because of all my other projects to do and somehow I'm here now but it was on my goal list back uh, at the end of March when I did this amazing um, Yes, it is. It really is. Um, and something you, you've talked about doing your home before. I had a little time when, uh, did you find it? No. You still still looking? Looking. I'm um, listening and looking. Okay. I'll tell a little story about uh, manifesting. It was a cottage for us. Okay. Um, and my husband was getting ready to retire. He thought about five years, he would be retired. And this, this happened in 2002. And it happened in July and I decided, I think it was March or so that I would like to have a cottage. And back then in our province, um, I do financial planning. And so okay. for me to say, we're going to buy a cottage and um, that close to my husband retiring, he thought I had totally, totally lost it. <laughs> he was not interested. We never camped. Um, he just, he, he, when I said cottage, he thought some rundown thing and, and it, it did not want anything to do with it, not whatsoever. So I put it in my goals list and all of a sudden in June, there was this one little tiny word ad in the newspaper and it was three lines. I swear, you know, how thin the, the want ads are yes. Yes. three lines. And I thought, well, I called the number. And the person that was selling it was um, had been an was an investor the same as me, a financial planner. And markets really kicked the crap out of people um, <laughs> for a couple of years prior to that. Anyway, life wasn't so good for him. He had to unload some things. Not that he sold it cheap. I ended up paying what I what he asked for, but he went to see him and his wife was crying and the kids were upset they're selling and he said well somebody came earlier or the day earlier I guess and he's going to buy it so I left I had my daughter with me and I decided to look around at some other places well that was on a Saturday night Monday morning I get a phone call and he said the other person backed out or anyway and the reason for this I didn't know until later this was probably the reason I had put down I had five thousand dollars to put down right because I, stupid me, I, I don't do mortgages. I, I was thinking that you only needed the same for a mortgage, 5% down. Anyway, you ended up, I said, yay, good. The other person backed out. So I got to check into it and you need it. I need it $12,500 to put down. Okay. Because it was a luxury property and the markets were bad. Anyway, it was just crazy. So it, I thought, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But even before that, my husband was like, if it takes more than 30 minutes to get there, I'm not interested. I'm never going. Da, 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 da. And he says, how can we afford this? I said, well, let me, let me, this be my project, not yours. Well, what happens if you can't afford it? I said, well, then we'll sell it. It's on the water. Right. It's not that big a place. It was $50,000. Uh, you know, we'll just put it up for sale. Right. So you kind of calm right. down. Anyway, long story short, he came the first night, 
growling, <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> um, we, we had the property until 2018. And we end up spending seven months of the year there. Nice. While we had it. And he fell in love with it right off the bat. And I think he only stayed away one or two nights. Well, he had to work, yes. But he changed his mind very quickly once he got there. Anyway, how I figured out <laughs> to get the rest of the money, I thought, yeah. oh, I can't let it go. How do I? Anyway, I asked and I thought, we have a line of credit somewhere. I'm going to borrow from that. <laughs> Perfect. And you made it happen. Yeah. Did you sell it for a profit? No, we lost it in a great flood. That's a, that's a crying story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you enjoyed it for all those years. That's how I have to look at it. We, we had a very expensive luxury vacation for, <laughs> for all those years. Right. Perfect. Excellent. Well, congrats. Congratulations. Okay. I and I didn't know all this other stuff. I, I didn't know all that. But you were, you were an unconscious competent. That. Yeah, I just was, it, it was amazing that it worked. Works brilliantly. Okay, here's the audio I found. Listen to this. This was, this is a uh, recorded with a, um, a voiceover. It's not Morgan Freeman's voice, but listen, it'll sound just like him. Oops. My dear Sophie. I'm writing this note to you with a very happy heart, knowing you, Eddie, and your family are in such a beautiful space. Enjoying so much of life's goodness is something I've always longed to see. Sophie, we both know I was guided to the park bench on that misty morning, oh, so many years ago, sitting beside you, Sophie. I could feel your energy, your sadness. It was breaking my heart. I wanted to reach out and hold you in my arms and just tell you it's okay. But I was certain I would scare you. And I knew I was guided there to help you. Your soul was crying out to God at that time. I prayed that day that you would accept my offer of help. We now know you had a choice. And unfortunately, so many individuals who are in the mental state you were in that day reject the assistance they are screaming for. They're not ready, Sophie. You are such a beautiful, courageous soul. You have followed through on every lesson that I have taught you. You are now able to guide others as I have guided you. We both know that all people are equal. We are God's highest form of creation. The only difference exists in awareness. And that awareness is what creates the obvious differences. People are naturally drawn to you, Sophie, because of your energy. They feel your goodness and your willingness to provide service. You have become one of the most service-oriented individuals I've had the pleasure of knowing. I particularly love the way you leave everyone you meet with the impression of increase. Continue to share these lessons in your writing and in your everyday behavior. Time changes everything, Sophie. We both have very busy lives today and may not have the opportunity to visit as often as we have in the past. However, I want you to know that as long as my heart continues to beat, we will be connected, my dear friend. Go forth and share your awareness with others. Sophie, the success you are enjoying is merely one small step in the direction greatest things you will do, many of which are beyond your wildest dreams. Your loving friend, in spirit, Sally. Hmm. Pierce, I must mention, Sophie, although I am sure you are already aware of this truth, every time I've been with you over these years, every time 
I forget to bring this to your attention. I have neglected to tell you that Chad's leaving was no accident. Chad had to leave to create a space for the good that your heart desired. Amazing, isn't it? Lovely. <laughs> wow, that was like an amazing gift. So Troy had sent me a message and he says, I have something for you, but I, but I want to give it to you when we're on Zoom because I want to see your face. Oh, and, you probably, uh, I would have cried. Oh yeah, he, he recorded it. He, he recorded my reaction because I was sitting there. I mean, when he started to play, I was like, <laughs> like, oh my God, we're going to bring this to record the, oh my God. I was just absolutely in it. And then he told me that was a voiceover. I sent it to Bob. I forwarded yeah. over to Bob Proctor and I said, listen to this. And he replied, he replied, replied right away. And he goes, um, nice voiceover. I mean, he knew right away. It's just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you would have told him if you had him before. <laughs> right. And I sent him this picture too. I, and, and he said, oh, nice Photoshop work, <laughs> Sophie. He calls me Sophie. Nice Photoshop work, Sophie. Anyways, Laura Lee, thank you so much for sharing that story. That was fabulous. My pleasure. All righty. Okay, everyone, we are going to wrap up for today and be back tomorrow. Thank you. Are you going to send it to Morgan? You know, who's, who asked that question? Jamie, are you going to send it to Morgan? <laughs> Do you think he would like it? You know what? I think he'd love it. I think he'd absolutely love it. And it's interesting, Jamie, that you asked that question because as I was watching or listening to that, I was thinking, I'm going to send that to Morgan. <laughs> and so it's, it's funny that you asked, Jamie. So yes, I'm going to definitely get it over to him. And uh, I think it's amazing. Uh, Phil knows how to get in touch with him. And I think he'll, he'll really enjoy it. And I'm certain that Morgan Freeman is familiar with that guy who plays his voice. It's such an amazing voice. All right. So you have some homework to do. What's your homework? Oh, Jamie has a question. All right, Jamie. Please unmute your line for me. There we go. Oh, you can't unmute? Okay. There. Okay. Hang on. That's my phone. Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead, Jamie. Who did the music? It, 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 it makes your writing even more spectacular. Who did the music? Troy added the music. So, oh, yeah. The music. He added the music. And um, I think. Did he find it or get it from somewhere? He got it off uh, the internet. Um, it's royalty free music. Oh. And that's that's where he got it. Fabulous. Yeah, it's amazing. For those of you that haven't read Savvy Wisdom, that's your homework. No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> it's definitely your homework. But what I also suggest is write out your belief statements, write out the beliefs that you, yeah, Keith just did it. Yes, your homework is what kind of beliefs do you need to achieve that goals? What do you need to believe about yourself? So yes, that is the homework. Thank you, Keith, for asking. And thank you, Jane, I appreciate you. Yes, Jackie, it is more emotional when you hear that. You're right, absolutely. You know, it's emotional for me because Bob wrote that letter. So in Savvy Wisdom, you guys know that, many of you know that. So Savvy Wisdom is a parable. It's a story that I wrote about my life and meeting Bob Proctor. So Savvy is a guy, that's Bob. And so I asked Bob if he would write that, that letter um, to finish up the book and he agreed. So he wrote that letter. It's interesting, when I sent that letter over to Brian Proctor, who's a very close friend of mine, he said to me, he said, it's almost as if dad is writing that letter to you. And I said, yeah, I thought the same thing. And uh, anyways, beautiful, beautifully, beautifully written. And uh, it's just part of the uh, journey that we're all on. So bottomless gratitude to you too. Thank you, Mark, for being here. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all the kind words. We're going to be back again together tomorrow, four o'clock. Please join us. We'll put the replay up. It'll be up probably tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, we'll have it up on that replay page and then we'll uh, get into to a very powerful session tomorrow as well. All right, everyone, have a wonderful evening, afternoon or whatever time of day it is for you. Blessings to all of you. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting in me and I'll see you all tomorrow.